Food is a universal necessity. Everyone has to eat to survive. But preparations, ingredients, and access vary wildly over the colonial period. In this, we're going to show you three different dishes that highlight the differences in how people were eating and what they were eating. In this garden, you'll see many plants. Some of them are native to America. Some of them come from faraway places. The ones that we're going to be talking about today are corn, wheat, cinnamon, and oysters. Some of the things that we'll be talking about is who can access these ingredients and why. Corn is an edible cereal grain in the grass family that is native to the Americas. Growing here long before the colonists even set foot and in, eaten by the indigenous peoples, it became a staple grain of the area when wheat became easier to export than it did to grow. This is oysters and cinnamon. Cinnamon is native to Sri Lanka and is the bark of a tree. It's very expensive and takes a lot of time and effort to grow, but even before shipping over to the Americas. It makes it expensive to the colonists and only accessible to those who are rich and have the income to afford it. The other is oysters. Oysters are, once again, native to the Bay Area and help filter out the water. These would have grown in abundance and been quite large even for the time period making it free and very easy for the colonists to get their hands on. The three dishes we'll be talking about today are white bread, cornbread, and kush. We're going to go over the differences and the similarities between these three things, who was making them, and why. Here we're crumbling cornbread to start making a dish called kush. Kush originates from Islamic West Africa, and is a product of the adaptation of enslaved Africans coming over here and utilizing ingredients that were here to make something that was familiar to them. Here we're cutting up sage, rosemary, and thyme to add to the kush to give it some flavoring. These three herbs are quite common and grow very easily in the gardens of colonial America and are referenced in quite a few cookbooks of the time. Next, we're gonna cut up some onions, to add to our kush, these can be grown in a garden or they can also be foraged wild. Foraging is a great way to supplement the diets of people living in colonial America, but it can be dangerous as if you don't know what you're looking for, you can find poisonous plants. And this is even true for back then. Next, we're gonna give this a little bit of a stir, get that all mixed together before we add some fat to the pan. Here, we're gonna use butter, which is pretty common at the time as it utilized any leftover milk that couldn't be consumed automatically. Common fats were also um, pork fat, tallow, lard, and then you're gonna add that to the pan and let that cook for a little bit to get rid of any raw onion taste. Last but not least goes in chicken stock to rehydrate the entire thing as this is leftover cornbread that would have dried out a little bit overnight and there you have kush this becomes dressing if you're from the south and cornbread stuffing if you are from the north kush is something many enslaved africans would have had access to as it comes from day old cornbread it would have been something that would have been given to them because it was cheap and easy to sustain themselves with they're taking that and they're making it into something new and adapting to their surroundings, creating something that is similar to what is back home, but with ingredients that they have access to in an unfamiliar place. White bread is something that not many classes of people had access to. It was typically reserved for the rich, upper classes as white bread is made of white flour, which is far more expensive during the colonial periods. White flour had to be processed differently, meaning it took a lot longer than whole wheat did as it needed to be processed and separated differently, making it a lot more labor intensive and time consuming and a much more expensive product that not many could afford. To make this cornbread, we're gonna use cornmeal, flour, butter and milk, molasses, and salt. To make this, we're going to combine all the ingredients into the bowl and stir it until it is nice and mixed. One of the things we're using to make this cornbread is molasses, which is a byproduct of the sugar making process. Molasses is much cheaper than sugar, meaning it would be more easily accessible for the colonists to get their hands on it and for the enslaved Africans that are in the area to also use it as it is the cheaper option and is much more easily accessible for them.
Finally, we're gonna press these into patties and put them on another hot cast iron with a little bit of butter. It could also be lard, and we're gonna let them brown on one side for a little bit. So we put this back on the fire to let them get brown, and we're going to flip them over and let them cook on the other side. You can also cook this in a loaf pan, which might be some, the way you are more accustomed to seeing it when you make it at home or when you possibly see it in the store. Food can be the greatest unifier among people. It has the ability to be the bridge that brings people back together and a source of comfort and familiarity to those forced into unknown places far from their homes. But with these three dishes, it was used to define the lines of class, gender, race, and social differences during the colonial periods. The three dishes you see contain similar ingredients and are the early products for modern foods we enjoy today. Think about what you'll eat for dinner. Think about your favorite foods or what you make for a special occasion. And be curious about where those foods came from. Ask questions. The answer may surprise you.